And now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please join me in welcoming Madam Tsai Ing-wen to the podium. Chairman Ching, uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, Chairman Seward, and President Willagala, and Director Quinchinson, and um, members of the American Chamber of Commerce in Taiwan, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Um, I do notice that there are quite a number of members of the cabinet are here. Uh, that means I'm very well accompanied. Um, would you stand up and uh, see how many of uh, members of the cabinet are here? Thank you. I'm so delighted to see former Vice President Chen Jian uh, is here tonight with us. Um, so nice to see you here. Uh, <laughs> It seems like we were here not so long ago at last year's Xian Yan Fan. <laughs> well, it is my pleasure to join you all again at this festive gathering. I believe this is the first Xian Yan Fan after M Chen Taipei changed its name to M Chen Taiwan. And this is a name that is a true reflection of the work and membership of your organization. As always, I'm very happy to participate in this gathering of friends. I want to begin by congratulating M Chen Taiwan on its 70th anniversary. M Chen Taiwan was here when Taiwan underwent democratization. It also bore witness to the development opening and transformation of Taiwan's economy. MCHEN Taiwan has always been a dependable partner to Taiwan and the United States during many critical junctures in our relationship. Secondly, I also want to recognize Chairman Leo Seward for leading and facilitating MCHEN Taiwan's relationship with Taiwan's business community over the past year. Under Mr. Seward's leadership this year, we have a record number of central and local government officials attending tonight's dinner, as mentioned by Mr. Chen just now. Mr. Seward is an 11-year resident and citizen of Taiwan. Uh, I gather you speak Taiwanese and Mandarin all right. <laughs> With his care and love for this country, I have no doubt that Mr. Seward will continue to contribute to the partnership between Taiwan and the United States. I also want to take this opportunity to, con to congratulate Mr. Welagala for taking on the role of ancient Taiwan president. Mr. Welagala's remarkable experience in international trade and investment, I am confident that our relationship will continue to flourish. We look forward to, we look forward to working with ancient Taiwan under your leadership. After more than a year of closures, lockdowns, and other pandemic restrictions, countries around the world are now looking to revive economic growth. Many obstacles still remain, though. And there is a long way to go before the global economy can recover and return to normal. But in Taiwan, we persevered and even prospered. All of you here are witnesses to this. We were able to effectively deal with the spread of COVID-19 through collaborations between our government, industries, civil society, and the citizens. The data continues to show that Taiwan's economy has held up extremely well amid the pandemic. As a matter of fact, Taiwan's economic growth rate in 2020 was 3.11%. Oh. 
<laughs> Highest among the world's 30 largest economies by GDP. We are also forecasting economic growth of 4.64% this year, or even higher. Uh, and this is going to be the highest since 2015. The dynamism of Taiwan's economy is key to all of this. I'm happy to learn that in the years, in this year's business climate survey, 86% of your members feel optimistic about Taiwan's economic growth this year. And almost 80% of you also feel positive about Taiwan's economic performance in the next three years. That is towards the end of my term as the president here. <laughs> I feel so blessed. Uh, I, I am even happier to learn that 40% of NCHAM members have plans to expand recruitment. So I want to take this moment to thank you all for your confidence and support for Taiwan. We will continue to take proactive steps to improve our energy, digital, and labor policies, as well as our regulatory framework to ensure that Taiwan continues to be an ideal location for foreign investment and relocation. Now, countries and companies around the world are preparing to reinvigorate their trade and business relationships. I am pleased to see exceptional individuals and companies relocating to Taiwan. Last September, I handed out employment gold card number 1,000 to a foreign professional at the presidential office. Now, this gold card represents our effort to attract and recruit outstanding professionals to Taiwan. It also exemplifies the, the numerous opportunities available amid the restructuring of a global supply chain. Since 2018, our government has issued 2,447 employment gold cards in total, and 30% of these were issued to Americans, <laughs> including YouTube co-founder Stephen Steve Chang and quite a few professionals from the Silicon Valley as well. In addition, following major investment announcements from American corporations such as GE, CTCI Corporation, Applied Materials, Google, and Microsoft, Cisco also opened a cybersecurity talent incubation center in the Inco Startup Terrace, the first in the region for Cisco. I don't know whether Cisco is represented here today. Thank you. This center is expected to serve as a platform for IT specialists to exchange views, to cultivate new talent, and to provide solutions in areas such as software-defined networking, cybersecurity, cyber cloud technology, and Internet of Things. We firmly believe that through this kind of cooperation, the mutually beneficial relationship between Taiwanese and American firms can continue to thrive. With such a close partnership between the Taiwanese and American business communities, I want to reiterate my government's commitment to prioritizing this partnership through concrete actions. To this end, we established quite a few collaborative mechanisms last year. This included the agreement on scientific and technological cooperation and the signing off and working group meeting under the framework to strengthen infrastructure finance and market building corporations. We also held the inaugural Taiwan-US Economic Prosperity Partnership Dialogue last November. The collaboration discussed at the dialogue is vigorously underway in forums like the Round Table on Prospects for Taiwan-U.S. Semiconductor Supply Chain Corporation held on February 
the 5th. President Biden's executive order to create more resilient and secure supply chains for critical and essential goods is a key area where Taiwan can help. Taiwan's semiconductor industry plays a critical role in securing supply chains around the world and is a significant part of the Taiwan-US trade relationship. We stand ready to be a reliable friend and key partner to the United States. This is why I was delighted to see TSMC participate in the White House summit to strengthen US supply chains and address the global semiconductor shortage. Lastly, I want to conclude by extending our appreciation to MCHEN Taiwan and US Taiwan Business Council for establishing the US Taiwan Bilateral Trade Agreement Coalition. Thanks, thank you for your staunch support for solidifying uh, the bilateral trade partnership between Taiwan and the United States in the form of a bilateral trade agreement. Our economic partnership can also be strengthened further by resuming talks under the Trade and Investment Framework Agreement, that is TIFA, to lay the foundation for our BTA negotiations. Having been involved in Taiwan's trade negotiation for many years, I fully understand the immeasurable importance of trade and investment for our partnerships. So you can, re you can rest assured that our government will uphold our commitment to improving and maintaining a robust trade and investment environment here. Last year was a challenge for all of us. The pandemic brought about significant changes in the geopolitical and economic order. With the introduction of the vaccine, there's hope that the pandemic can be brought under control, hopefully in the near future. In the meantime, Taiwan will continue to work with like-minded countries to maintain a free and secure region and provide an ideal environment for economic recovery and development. I look forward to the remarks from Senator Mark Markey, Councillor Chalet, and Deputy Assistant Secretary Stephens, and thanks to Senator McKee's introduction of the Taiwan Fellowship Act. The United States government employees can be part of an exchange program to learn, to live, and to work in Taiwan. With good friends like Mr. Markey and our recent visitors, that is former Senator Dart and Deputy Secretaries of State, Armitage and Steinberg. I'm confident that the relationship between Taiwan and the United States will continue to be rock solid. <laughs> Finally, uh, thank you to M. Chen Taiwan. I know you will continue to be a true friend and a partner to Taiwan over the next 70 years <laughs> as well. <laughs> Have a wonderful evening and enjoy your meal. Thank you. Thank you very much, President Tsai. If you could please return to your seat on the stage.